What the devil is going on, tribe? Welcome back to our second episode of The Conquest for Ezra. I'm here to give you all the guides that you need to get the feats done in Sector 2. Let's break this down. Here we are in wonderful, wonderful Sector 2, and what can we say about the feats? Well, we need to gain a bonus turn 50 times, which isn't too terribly bad. We need to attempt to inflict Breach 50 times, which is a bit of a weird one. And we need to defeat 35 enemies with Morgan Elsbeth and gain Alert 20 times. Now, a couple of these I would recommend skipping. In particular, defeating 35 enemies with Morgan Elspeth, it can be done relatively easily with at least a little bit of investment into your Morgan Elspeth. She doesn't need to be 7 star or relicked up or anything like that. Probably 3 star gear 11 will be enough, but at the end of the day, this is only worth 5 data discs. You might as well skip it. Only do this if you have to. I have got a guide how to get all these kills done in one battle, but it requires a data disc setup to really get it to work. Alert 20 times is a similar thing. That can only be done by the new Night Trooper. A little bit easier. We can get that work flowing and everything like that, but it needs a bit of a setup once again. So before we begin, what's a couple of things that I can recommend? I do recommend that you save most of it until you get to the end over here where you can do the Iden battle, but also it's in your interest to find yourself a GG team that has got Droidic I'm pretty sure we have one here somewhere because I used it earlier today. Just can't remember the position of it. It's somewhere around here. They oh, actually, this one will do. Like a newt with a droidica. Droidica is the most important part thing, guys, okay? That's the most valuable part, is to make sure that there is a Droidica, because we're going to be abusing his damage immunity status, essentially, in order to cheese a couple of these feats. Now, I'm going to start off with the Morgan Elspeth setup, trying to get 35 kills with her. It can be done right at the end on the enemy boss node. Now, this does require particular data disks, so we're going to go over that first. So as you can see here in the video I'm about to show you, I've got myself a protection shield. This is just to keep people nice and healthy. We've got voluntary vanguard. This is an absolute necessity. You need to have that malak taunting all the time. Weak spot is going to be ramping up her offense insanely. Whenever an ally attacks, they gain 2% offense stacking for each debuff on all characters. So if the enemy's got a bunch of debuffs, we're going to ramp up 2% offense every single time we hit them, multiplied by the number of debuffs. So if there are 5 debuffs on 5 characters, that's 25 debuffs, times that by 2%, that's 50% increase in offense, and it infinitely stacks, guys. You do stupid damage. I've got Amplify Agony on here just to do a little bit of extra damage when we hit them. We've got something called Assertive Command. Basically, when an ally uses a basic ability during their turn, they will call another random ally to assist, who's going to do 30% less damage. This just gives us an extra opportunity to call Morgan Elsbeth to attack, which means one, she'll ramp at offense, and two, has a chance of killing people. And then I've got two lots of Ruthless Offense, which means whenever an enemy falls below 100% health, we are going to gain additional offense over here. I've got a 16% and a 13%. Just just one of them is really necessary, but as long as you've got this setup here, you don't want something like Volatile Accelerator for this because you will end up killing off the enemy characters and you don't want that to happen. So let's take a look at the team that we're using there. I'm going in with a Malak lead here with Morgan Elsbeth. I know mine is Relic 7, it doesn't necessarily matter. You will need a bit of gear invested to make sure she doesn't die and to give her more offense so she starts to ramp a bit more. I'm throwing in Wat Tambor, Hermit Yoda and General Skywalker. He's just there to put out some additional debuffs, do crazy, crazy damage to clear through some of the enemy characters a lot quicker and he also can reduce her max health by a certain amount. Every time he hits her and she doesn't have protection, he will reduce her max health by 20%. It kind of helps let us get through her a little bit quicker, but in the end you end up doing like millions of points of damage with gas. It's fun. It's fun. So the good thing about this is for the most part, it can be done on full auto. All we're really looking to do right now is put the tank tech over on Malak. That's essentially going to be uh, cleansing him. It's not about forcing him to taunt. The voluntary vanguard does that for us. We put the tank tech on him to cleanse him because the enemy does stun. The enemy dazes vulnerables. The enemy does go ahead and put heal immunity. And we don't want any of that. So essentially, once we've allocated the techs from what, we're going to put it on full auto. I'm placing Master's training over here on Morgan's El Elspeth. You see how just a second ago, let's go back a couple of frames over here. If, if, if we can, if we can. I just want to go back to Morgan Elspeth's basic over there. Where was it? Let's, uh, let's check that out. I think it's after this. So yeah, just here. Just here, I think we get an attack here with Morgan Elsbeth. So she's going over and she's doing an attack there when she gets called to assist with Master's Training. You can see the enemy's got fear, two dots, fear, fear. So what is that? That's four debuffs, four times 2% is going to be 8%. She's just ramped up 8% offense doing that attack. You might not think, oh, that's not very much, and you'd probably be right, but it's going to be happening across the entirety of this 10 minute. So if we see there, 
She did, what, 18,000 damage right now. Let's come back and check that at the end. Don't forget, lots of debuffs here, lots of damage going on. So all I'm doing right now is I'm waiting to get Watt's techs out. We want to put the recovery tech on Morgan Elspeth just to keep her nice and healthy. And then we want to put the weapons tech over on Hermit Yoda. Now you don't even have to put the weapons tech on. The only reason I chose to put the weapons tech on Hermit Yoda is so I can go full auto at a certain point. Now we don't want to use a gas lead here because he does prevent revives. That's why he's only an ally and we've got Malak in the leadership. Preventing revives kind of defeats the whole purpose. I'm using Morgan Elsbeth's second special here nice and early because that gets a permanent debuff on the enemy team, which means we're always going to be hitting somebody who has got a debuff, which means we are always going to be ramping up offense every time we do an attack. So at this point, you probably could choose to ignore the Shore Trooper and just focus on um, Aiden. I'm choosing not to do that because I want to actually get rid of Shore Trooper so he stops taunting because I find that taunt to be a little bit irritating. Once we've gotten rid of Shore Trooper, we're just going to put it on Auto Basic and we're going to target directly down on Aiden Verzio and then kind of... That's it, guys. That, that's literally it. You just go ahead and put it on full, full Auto Basic if you don't know how to do that, you go into the settings up here in the top left, you go into auto battle and you can select either um, all attacks, basics or select basically. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on two times speed because we are just leaving this here now on auto basic. And in this run, I had like 38 kills with Morgan Elsbeth something like that and the only reason we lost the battle is because i let it time out you can actually choose to win this battle and then you'll actually beat that boss node but this is the easiest way to get it done you can see we're already what seven minutes and 30 seconds into the game morgan elsbeth is now doing about 60,000 damage compared to the 18,000 damage she was doing at the start but it will go into the stratosphere not quite as high as gas is doing at the end of this battle gas will be doing millions of points of damage on every hit but eventually we will she's doing over a hundred thousand already it's just kind of crazy. It's only on the crits, 125,000 there. Gas is like skyrocketing into the millions now. I think he's at 1.8 million damage on his hits. I'm playing this rather quickly, so I can't really tell. Look, he's 200. Oh my god. He's just doing stupid, stupid damage right now. Absolutely crazy damage. And Morgan Elsbeth is even doing 200,000 damage on a basic right now. So yeah, it's that, that particular data disc that we were talking about. I can't remember what it's called now. But uh, that one there allows us to ramp so much offense it's absolutely insane and whenever we do get an opportunity to hit uh, Iden Verzio when she has no protection with gas we are going to be reducing her max health we've done it a couple of times already there's going to be a couple more occasions where it does happen and that's going to reduce her max health and just make it a little bit easier you'll notice later when we do a life drain with Malak you'll see that she actually we only take off about 10% of her max protection because we've reduced her max health so much but eventually, at about about this point, I think Morgan Elsbeth starts quite literally one-tapping every single time she takes a turn. And there's an occasion where either Wat Tambor or Hermit Yoda uses a basic that she's going to get called into assist thanks to our other data disc. But you can see here she's just one-tapping the side and completely now. Gas is doing stupid amounts of damage. And that's kind of it, guys. You just let it play out. And like I said, I got 38 kills for this. It took a while to figure out the setup, but once it's there, once you're set up and done, I think there are probably multiple ways of getting this done as well. I, I think maybe if you went in with a JML lead and called in gas constantly to reduce her max health, it could also happen. You just need to find a way of constantly dazing the enemy, keeping them locked up, and making sure they're focusing entirely on uh, JML there. But that's kind of it, guys. That's, you see the life drain there? It only took off, what, 15, 20% of her max protection instead of probably more close to 70 to 80%. Morgan Elspeth doing stupid damage. I'm just going to skip ahead to the end of the battle now just so we can have an idea about how much damage these guys do because it is kind of nutty. All right, we're in the last couple of seconds here. Let's... Whoa, hold up, hold up, hold up. How, how much damage was that? That uh, more, So gas over here <laughs> doing... But well, there's 8,000, 78,000, 178,000, 21 million. 21 million, 178,000 damage from gas. And there's a 23 million, 23, casual. Hold up, Morgan. Hold up, Morgan. How much? Okay, Morgan, even Morgan Elsbeth is doing, what, 1.2 million damage? Thank goodness for that true damage we've got over there. I mean, it just gets kind of crazy. 38 kills for that particular battle. You'll do all of that feat in one go. Next up, we're going to be looking at the alert feat, and I'm going to be using this Newt Gunray one with the Droidica. The Droidica is the important part here. We're going to be taking in CLS with Captain Rex. Now, what I do recommend for this particular thing is that you do go ahead and use a deployable cooling systems 
consumable. Now, the way you get this is if we head over here to the global feats is over here, we need to win with 15 battles with four Gungans or fewer. Now you can get this done with at the end game with a proper data disc setup, go in with someone like Lord Vader with a Volatile Accelerator, Amplify Agony, and just four Gungans and start farming bonus nodes to get these done. There's absolutely no rush to do it straight away when you're in Sector 2, come back to it at a later date. Once you've got that deployable cooling system, come back over here and take a look at this node. Now, like I said, we're going to be using that CLS team. Um, so it's going to be almost full CLS here. We're going to go in with CLS. We're going to go in with Chewie. We're going to go in with Han. We're going to go in with Captain Rex. And then, of course, the only character that can actually do alert is Night Trooper on his first special. The idea behind this is we're going to lock down that Droidica, and then we're just going to be spreading buffs to constantly do alert as many times as possible. Let's do it. And here we go. All you want to do at the start is get rid of what Tambor, just completely yeet him out of existence, and then wait for the battle to commence properly. So get rid of uh, extortion at any opportunity, and you want to get that uh, want to get the AOE days slash tenacity down out as soon as possible. Now, once Droidica has rolled up, this is the important part. Droidica needs to be rolled up and in damage immunity. What we have to do is get tenacity down on him and then not let him take a turn. So you see there, I did a basic with Chewbacca. That is super important. Get that basic on because basic on Chewbacca will put tenacity down. And if he's got tenacity down, we can start landing debuffs. Once we've shocked him, this first special from our Night Trooper puts alert on us. So that's one use of it there. After that, you want to be using specials with Han Solo to pass additional buffs. And then it is full send into Droidica. Do not dispel him. Never dispel him. That's two alerts. Because we're just going to keep him locked in damage immunity with tenacity down and he'll never take a turn for the rest of battle. Cleanse off that extortion at all opportunities, and between Han and CLS, you're going to be reducing the enemy's turn meter and keeping them in stun lock. That's three alerts there, I believe. Uh, so the enemy will never take a turn from here on out. You've got multiple sources of that daze available, one with... Uh, uh, not days, sorry, of Tenacity down, one with Chewbacca, one with the AoE coming out of Captain Rex. After that, you're just keeping this guy locked down. That's all it is. You have to play it manually, unfortunately, because every so often you're going to have to go over to that Night Trooper and hit that first special. Fortunately, whenever Han Solo does his AoE and whenever, uh, sorry, when Han Solo shrugs and Captain Rex does his AoE, we are passing buffs, which under deployable cooling system is going to attempt to reduce our cooldowns. Now, in an ideal world, you'd have someone like Grandmaster Yoda passing additional buffs and stuff like that to constantly, constantly, constantly reduce the cooldowns. He can also get the bonus turn only, though, if there is extra Jedi, which unfortunately we do not have at this point. But this is still a really useful way of getting it done. You'll be able to see the number of times that I get um, alert done. It might take two battles. The most important thing, guys, is that you do not kill the Droidica and you do not finish it up. Okay, so this is a good use, in my opinion, of using that deployable cooling systems. If you don't have a lot of investment in your night troopers, this is probably your best solution. If you have got full investment in the new night troopers, uh, night trooper, death trooper, peridia, and all that sort of business, just run the team organically as you go through, okay? I do find, though, that in this particular conquest, they do a lot of damage, so you might have some trouble getting all the alerts that you need to. I think that's probably about alert six or seven, something like that. I believe we get about half of them done in this one battle, maybe a little bit more. Um, you'd have to go back and count. I haven't really been paying attention, unfortunately. But I know that this is a relatively efficient way of getting it done. All right. Smashing. When you're still using that deployable cooling system setup to try and get your alerts, you can also get all of your bonus turns done in a single battle as well. You need to be going ahead and taking off anything that's going to ramp your offense. I'm okay with Voluntary Vanguard and Amplify Agni and Volatile Accelerator and Amplify Agni. All that stuff is great. It's beautiful, in fact. And you're going to go over to the Hux node or anything that's got a crew node on it. And what we're going to take in is a couple of things here. We need some Jedi first and foremost. We do want to have some nice Jedi so that we can gain some benefits over here. You could use something like a Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker lead. You could use a Jedi Knight Revan. I'd recommend taking in Grand Master Yoda as well. It's very, very useful to have him done. And then you could take in Jedi Knight Cal Kestis, and that will give you an option to um, essentially try to... Um, gain additional bonus turns. Whenever he does his basic, he'll gain a bonus turn. But we're just right now going to use Bastila to gain additional buffs. Now, you still need that deployable cooling system. Let's not forget about that. And then we'll throw in Darth Vader, okay? So we've got Darth Vader over here, and we'll just roll with this. The idea behind this is, of course, to try and get it down to just crew, and then we're going to be abusing deployable cooling systems to pass us lots of buffs to reset cooldowns on everything. It's going to be wonderful. 
They're going to go after Gen Knight Luke because he's got that voluntary Vanguard going. It's completely fine if he gets a bonus turn because we can just go stun. Isn't that wonderful? Now we can go into Merciless Massacre here. Now every single turn, if you take a look at Merciless Massacre down here, gain Merciless Massacre, blah, 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 and a bonus turn after this one. All enemies gain Merciless Target. When Darth Vader uses an ability, Merciless Target is removed, and Darth Vader takes a bonus turn. So here we go. Everybody, hit people with that. Bonus turn. Isn't that nice? Bonus turn. Oh, crap. I accidentally went back to crew. Don't do what I do. Don't go back to crew. Okay, so I'm going to pass this over to Basti right now. Get rid of everybody. You want it to be just crew at the end of the day. We're going to pass buffs over to Grand Master Yoda. The reason we're passing buffs to Grand Master Yoda is when he spreads those buffs, he's going to give it to everybody. That's going to decrease people's cooldowns. Isn't that nice? And then we'll just give it back to Grand Master Yoda. And guess what? When Grand Master Yoda uses his first special, that counts as a bonus turn if he has got an additional living Jedi. So, bonus turn. Isn't that nice? Spready. Isn't that nice? Stunny. Isn't that nice? Pass it back over. Grandmaster Yoda. Bonus turn. Spready. Pass it back over to Grandmaster Yoda. Bonus turn. Spready. I know this might seem rather silly, and let's be honest, guys, it is rather silly. I, you know, I'm not going to deny. This is just an easy way of getting a bunch of bonus turns, truth be told. And then we'll pass it back over here, I guess. Wonderful. Now we'll do this to hop up here. He is going to counterattack, but I'm not too concerned. And we will just go ahead and spready, and then we can go into Merciless Massacre. There's one extra turn, and an extra bonus turn there, and we'll just drop some of that. So you get a couple of bonus turns from Vader, and really it's just about passing turns back and forth to Grandmaster Yoda, who can then just do a hop, and then go ahead and do a spready. Now in an ideal world, we would be able to keep con crew controlled. Maybe we could drop vader and throw in like thrawn for example and that would still work but hey it's not like we're at the uh, the end of our tether here i don't know why i did the hop there realistically speaking i should have been going ahead and doing the hop and then doing a spready and then passing the turn but you see how this goes guys you see how this goes essentially you could just do this for the entire 10 minute battle here and you will get all of your bonus turns now you could throw in somebody that's going to throw down breach like master qui-gon jinn there is a slight risk there but it should be okay all in all um, and that will get you breach working as well the only problem you can't really do this with um, you can't do this with night trooper to get the alerts unfortunately because night trooper will place down a um, he'll he'll place down a crit uh, a crit a heal immunity get there eventually I can't play and talk at the same time guys but this will this will get down your bonus turns in one battle as well cool Next up, we are looking at Breach as well as looking at getting bonus turns. So JML does an AoE Breach on his second special, that Flux. Cal Kestis, Gem Knight Cal Kestis also does bonus turns every single turn. He takes a turn, which is really, really useful. And Master Qui-Gon Jinn on his basic will do Breach. So you can use this sort of team organically as you're going through the sector to get a lot of Breaches and work on that global feat for wins with Master Qui-Gon Jinn and get bonus turns all the time. Now, this isn't the most effective one. I could have, should have probably dropped out Hermit Yoda here and thrown in Grandmaster Yoda because his first special, that AoE that he does, if there are Jedi in his team, he's going to take a bonus turn, another source of bonus turn. You can also use the likes of characters such as um, Darth Vader or Maul. Mold from Conquest, when he's got those stacks of Frenzy, he's going to... Oh, actually, no, that's not a bonus turn. Apologies. That's actually just 100% turn meter. Ignore me. Frenzy doesn't count. Um, but um, Darth Vader certainly does. Darth Vader certainly does with his Merciless Massacre. That's going to give you five, maybe six bonus turns in total. Uh, actually, it might be a bit more than that. So all good options. You could use this against a crew node as well to just constantly keep the enemy alive. Um as long as you don't use the coin ability from JML. But yeah, Jedi Knight Calcast is very useful. Grandmaster Yoda, very useful. And then, like I said, um, JML and Qui-Gon Jinn here both apply Breach all the time. Qui-Gon Jinn on his basic and JML with Flux. Super. Mid-sector boss then for this particular sector. We're going up against a Hux team and we need to do two feats here. One is having Death Trooper Peridia surviving. One is with Master Qui-Gon Jinn and with OG Qui-Gon Jinn. Now what I'd recommend is if you've got a couple of GLs, particularly something like Lord Vader, you can actually do both of these feats in one battle by using something like a Lord Vader lead with Maul and then throwing these three characters in. So long as Death Trooper Peridia survives, you'll be absolutely okay. What you're really looking for is a setup like this in Data Disc 
discs, Voluntary Vanguard, Weak Spot, Amplify Agony, Volatile Accelerator, Amplify Agony, and Rutus Offense. This is all about ramping up damage and doing stupid damage to the enemy at the same time. If you've got that, like I said, go in with Lord Vader and you should be able to clean this up very, very quickly. If you don't have Lord Vader, I do have a solution using the same data disc setup. Let's start off with the Qui-Gons. So what we're doing is we're going in with a Beskar armor Mando lead with Dash and Chewie. Da no, with Han and Chewie, uh, so sorry. First thing you do is you take out the Sith Trooper on the enemy team. After that, you just play it cool until you can kill the rest of them. Basically, with any decent setup here with your team, the, the starting three is what matters. Doesn't matter if the other Qui-Gons die, they're not relevant. Just get your AoEs out, do those damage over times, and start laying into the enemy team as quickly as possible. If you can get rid of Hux, do it, but Sith Trooper is the most important person to get rid of because he does quite frankly stupid damage to the enemy team like i said this doesn't matter if these guys uh, survive all that matters is you win the battle win the battle win the war now if you want to do the death trooper peridia one take out the qui-gons put in dash dash does really really good work here and then of course put in death trooper peridia and do the exact same thing if you've got voluntary vanguard over there to draw the taunt over to one of your healthier units it will make it easier if you've got a low gear death trooper peridia the only real source of AoE there is from that Sith Trooper, so just take him out at the start. And finally, the boss node. Now, we've already touched on the boss node, getting some bonus feats done there, but we need to do two things. One, win with dark side characters, and two, defeat an enemy with Captain Tarples. I'm not going to show you dark side characters because pretty much any dark side team is going to run. I would recommend maybe using a Darth Revan lead. That will help you death mark on, uh, on Iden early on, and that will really clean up things very, very quickly. So long as you are going in and doing that damage, you'll be absolutely fine. Now, defeating an enemy with Captain Tarples, this can be done with a low gear Tarples, but it is a little bit tricky. Let's show the footage. Much like the mid-sector boss feat, then we are going in with a Dash Han Chewie lead. Dash Han Chewie lead? Bam, <laughs> Bam Han Chewie and Dash team uh, with Tarples as the fifth. Now, if you've got JML, this is a lot easier to get done just by using JML. You could throw in Watt if you don't have Voluntary Vanguard to place that tank tech on JML, keep him taunting forever. Um, and then you could just throw in, you know, a couple of Jedi to support, like Grandmaster Yoda and Hermit Yoda. You'll get some bonus turns, you'll get some breaches, and you'll be able to use JML's coin ability to call in Tarples to get a kill. However, with this data disc setup, we're using the Voluntary Vanguard with the um, with the Volatile Accelerator, Amplify Agni, and Weak Spot. We're going to be generating a lot of damage, especially thanks to Dash over there just doing stupid, stupid amounts of debuffs on the enemy. That ramps our offense so, so very quickly. I'm only focusing on Aiden right now, just because I want to make sure that Tarples gets a kill at some point. That's also why I'm not going into Whistling Birds, because that could do some crazy stuff to us. So I come in with a basic over here. Tarples is already doing some decent damage. He's of course going to have ramped some offense there thanks to all the debuffs on the enemy team. Not loads, but should be enough. This this should get you a, um, a kill with Tarples, provided you've got about gear 11 on him, to make sure he survives. I will say the JML setup is easier, but I want to try and give options for people. There we go, we got a kill with Tarples. I wanted to give options for people and another kill with Tarples um, that don't necessarily have relic Tarples, for example. Now, of course, if you've just got Gungans all the way geared up, just sending Gungans against this and you'll absolutely destroy it. It'll be great. So there you go. 300,000 damage at the end there with Tarples. Nice big AOE. And that is going to about do it for Sector 2, ladies and gentlemen. I hope this video was useful to you. If it was, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to your boy scribe. And I will see you all in the very next video. Peace out and may the force be with you.